Good morning. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce the next speaker. I think for many people who work in handball and football medicine, Marcus Walden probably doesn't need much of an introduction. But for those who don't know him, he's an orthopedic surgeon from Sweden and he's a senior researcher at the Football Research Group in Linkumping University. Did I say that correctly? Linkumping. Um, his main area of interest is epidemiology of football and handball injuries. And you could say that he has excellent experience in the field with one foot on the court and one foot on the pitch. He was the team physician for both handball and football elite teams, both male and female. So we all know that footballers are not handballers, um, but now we're really keen to hear from Marcus about his experiences and the differences between them. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, Celeste, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, thank you to, to the organizing committee. I'm basically a football injury researcher, but I'm also uh, uh, a team physician for, for uh, IFK Kristianstad, the, the best team in Sweden at the moment. We have won uh, 17 consecutive league matches, and we hope that this uh, season will be ours. Uh, we have uh, two profiles from uh, EFK here in Qatar for the World uh, Cup in handball. We have the, the second choice for the left backcourt, uh, Marcus Ulsson. And we also have the legend, uh, Ola Lindgren, uh, who is the head coach uh, uh, for the Swedish team. And I will skip this slide uh, because we are a little bit short of time. But um, I will talk a little bit about more Marcuses here. Uh, this is me. I'm uh, 199 centimeters and uh, 102 kilos. Uh, this is my wife's little brother. His name is also Marcus, Marcus Alm. He was the team captain of Kiel for many years. He is 200 centimeters tall and he, he has a body mass of 105 kilos. Uh, I only have uh, one title. It was in handball, but I'm mainly a footballer. And as you can see, Marcus has a lot of titles, including three champion, uh, Champions League victories and eight Bundesliga uh, titles. So when we have family dinners at my parents-in-law, there's no uh, hesitation who is little and who is big Marcus. If you look at our injury histories, we can see that uh, there might be some differences between a footballer and a handballer. And to know this, we need to go more into detail in the literature. And uh, searching on football injuries on PubMed, you will find almost 4,000 hits. On the other hand, if you do the same search on handball injuries, you find only slightly more than 200 studies. And in football, you have all kinds of studies, but as Greta said, uh, the handball injury research is limited, especially in certain areas. Uh, our group is the Football Research Group. We're based in Linköping in Sweden, and we collaborate very closely with the Euro European Football Association, UEFA. And uh, currently, we have a database with more than 20,000 football injuries from more than 100 teams. Uh, uh, different cohorts, our queen is the so-called UEFA Champions League study uh, that we've been running for 14 years. Uh, these are some of our articles. We have around uh, 50 publications, and if you're interested in them, you can uh, find more info at our website. And if you haven't read this issue, the September issue of uh, BJSM 2013, I can ha uh, recommend it to all of you. There are some nice studies out there in handball as well, and uh, this Aspetar journal issue is, is really great, and you all uh, have the possibility of, of getting that issue uh, during this uh, conference. Comparing football and handball is quite difficult because there are not very much data. This was a study in Sweden in, in uh, the middle of the 1980s, comparing 28 different sports. Uh, and we can see that the injury rate in football uh, and handball players on, on the men's side was similar, but it was twice as high among females. And if we look at this study conducted on the Olympic Games in Athens 2004, we can see that the uh, rate of all injuries was 
quite similar in men's football, women's football and men's handball, but it was twice as high in uh, women's handball. And uh, women's handball was actually the, the sport with the absolute highest injury rate of that Olympics. If we look at injuries, only resulting in time loss from sport, we can see that the figures are lower and they are between 30 and 40, slightly higher for handball players than football players in this Olympics. This slide is very busy, but I just want to point out here, four years later in the Olympics, that approximately one third of football players were injured during the tournament and about one sixth of the handball players. Unfortunately, in this study, there were no injury rates uh, reported and uh, we, uh, data for males and females were combined. Another four years later, in the Olympics 2012, we can see that still approximately one third of football players were, were injured during the tournament and here it was around one fifth of the handball players. But it's struggling. Again, there were no injury rates reported, but this time they separated male and female data and there was a significantly higher injury rate in, in uh, female footballers and also in handball players, but this was not significant. This is uh, the biggest study on handball injuries conducted uh, in, in several World Cups, European Championships and, and Olympics. And here you can see that the injury rate of all injuries was higher in the men's World Cups than in the previously mentioned Olympic Games, which had a similar injury rate to the women's tournaments. And if you look at the time loss injuries, again, around 30 to 40 uh, injuries per 1,000 hours, a uh, little bit less here uh, for the females. Uh, The Hamble study was conducted with the FIFA uh, methodology and they have also studied um, World Cups in football 2002 and 2006. And here you can see, if you remember the numbers, you can see the rate of all injuries are a little bit lower in football than in handball. But on the other hand, the expected time loss injuries in football is higher than in handball. We have also studied uh, European championships in football and you, you can see that um, the injury rate here is 36 injuries per 1,000 hours, both for female and males, and that correspond very well to the, the handball studies. The big four in football, as you all know, is the thigh injuries, especially the hamstring injuries, uh, also hip and groin, knee and ankle, and together these constitute more than 50% of all the time loss injuries in football. And the, the big issues in handball is, is also knee and ankle, as Greta said, but also upper extremity injuries, such as hand, wrist, or, or shoulder. If you look at upper extremity injuries in football, we published this a few years ago, and there was uh, only 3% of all injuries in footballers occurred to, to the upper extremity. It was 18% uh, in goalkeepers and 2% in outfield players. So taking exposure into account, goalkeepers were five times more at risk. 90% of the uh, upper extremity injuries were traumatic, acute in nature, and one third of them uh, uh, was the result of uh, foul play, and one fifth located to the AC joint. <coughs> what about hamstring strain? Hamstring strain is the single most frequent injury in football, and there are speculations uh, about why this is uh, the fact. But what about hamstring injuries in handball? Yeah, studies are basically lacking. Uh, we can just assume that the wing players may uh, be most affected and maybe goalkeepers and, and pivot players are less affected. And um, just to show you some anecdotal piece of evidence, uh, during my uh, years, 3.5 years in AFK Kukwansta, we have had no hamstring injury at all. So I know you're gonna point finger to me, Roel, but uh, we are actually not doing, uh, doing the Nordic hamstring exercises. But my feeling is that uh, it is less of a problem in handball uh, than in the football codes and track and fields. And this could be, be uh, 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 the, uh, 
uh, yeah, handball and football are different games and the physiological demands are different. We, we, we will not go into de details at the moment. Greta talked uh, a lot about uh, ACL injuries. Uh, there are similar injury mechanisms in handball and football and the injury rate seems to be uh, similar. One ACL injury uh, per team per season in male elite uh, uh, handball and football. But I would like to show you this video, it's a PCL injury from our team. And there will be a replay very soon where you can see the player comes in attacking phase, doing a sidestep cutting and is pushed from the back, over rotating the body and landing on the proximal part of the tibia. So we had a, a cluster of three identical injuries in five months. And uh, I wonder if anyone has similar experiences and uh, maybe this would be something to, to study further. further. So uh, let's talk about this in the coffee break uh, in Norwegians. Shoulder injuries, uh, I will not go very much into detail here, uh, except for mentioning that uh, uh, we are part of a study, the Karolinska Handball study from Stockholm in Sweden. We have the same methodology as uh, the studies from Norway, Ben Clarsen, but we do not look at uh, senior elite players. We look at um, high school uh, youth players. So we measure them uh, in a similar uh, way as the Norwegian study. And if you're interested in the results from this coming project, you can uh, follow uh, the lead of the project, Martin Asker. Uh, the interesting thing here, here is that uh, more than one third of the, the uh, teenagers here had, uh, had previous shoulder pain and 20% had current shoulder pain at the start of the semester. You might be familiar with this so-called sequence of prevention, the four steps in injury uh, surveillance research. This is the situation in football. We have loads of study and loads of data on step one and two, but there is limited data on, on prevention. Uh, we have some data, especially for, for female youth football. And uh, honestly, there are so, much study, so many studies out there, so uh, I think that we do, not, uh, we do not need any more studies on step one. We know that the injury risk is high and, and we know that the rates for different uh, subtypes of injuries. Maybe we need some more risk factor studies, but we definitely need more prevention research and implementation research in this field. The situation in handball is a little bit different. Uh, if you look at the studies, the relative amount of prevention studies is higher. Uh, and there are several good studies out there from, from Denmark and uh, Norway uh, uh, as examples. But I think in the future we really need more handball injury studies on step one and two because we do not know very much about the injury risk in handball. Trying to summarize this uh, talk, there are loads of data out there from, uh, for example, uh, the FMARC group, the UEFA uh, in collaboration with our research group and the Norway group. And all in all, we can say that senior handball players, they appear to have a, a similar overall injury rate compared with football players. They have a similar or a slightly higher rate of all injuries, and they have a similar, similar or slightly lower rate of time loss injuries. But there are few comparative studies between the sports. We do know, do know that there is a different injury pattern in handball, than in football, and the injury pattern in handballers uh, uh, resembles that of the goalkeepers in, in football. We need more studies, as I said before, and uh, when doing the literature review, I couldn't find any study reporting injury surveillance data for, for uh, uh, men's uh, elite league, for example. So we need more step one and two uh, studies uh, and uh, therefore I think that handball injury research need to go back to basic a little bit and uh, where are the hamstring injury studies? That's a hot topic in sports medicine at the moment. So do not forget the implementation research, don't stop 
with your prevention study and uh, do not forget the head injuries. I didn't mention uh, this in my talk here because it will be covered by Royal Bar tomorrow, but I just want to show you a final video clip and this might, uh, a little bit of warning here, it might be uh, a little bit scary. But this shows an incident where you have uh, the typical elbow to head impact as has been discussed very much in football and has been studied and, and it has been possible to reduce those kind of incidents um, in football. But these situations also occur in handball. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, um, Marcus. I'm very pleased to report that we're doing some injury and illness surveillance at this Handball World Championships um, under the auspices of uh, Juan Manuel Alonso, who will be leading the project. So hopefully soon we'll be able to report something back in that regard. Um, any, I think we have time for only one question. Is there anybody in the audience with a question? Just over there. from the UK and um, as a physiotherapy lecturer looking at the back of the Olympic legacy one of the findings came out that a lot of grassroots based research had to be done from an earlier stage than um, seniors so they started to put a lot of funding into school based and grassroots community projects looking at prevention measures I noticed that um, you have a, there's a Swedish study that looks at handball prevention is there any other um, projects that you know that have been actively involved where they're looking at handball from a secondary school perhaps level rather than an 18 and seniors plus level? I'm not sure I heard all of your question but the question was if I'm aware of, of more, more ongoing research. Now Sweden has been a black hole in this area and, and uh, uh, we would like to do more handball injury studies. I don't know uh, uh, the Norwegians are running the shoulder project uh, and, and uh, it's very nice that you are doing this uh, World Cup injury study here. We need more data but, but I'm not sure. Uh, uh I would be very interested in speaking to you because on the back of London 2012 with the legacy as a university lecturer that's what we're looking at linking in a lot more with academic studies and grassroots projects and community programs because a lot of the time the academies will scout within the community and then take them further up and the prevention then helps the reduced incidents when they do then go into um, more professional level playing. Yeah, that was a good comment. Uh, do you want me to expand on this or? Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we don't have time for anything else. It's uh, lunchtime now, so I'll hand over to Fawaz. Thank you very much, Marcus.